Have you ever tried to arrange a set of furniture in your room and then suddenly realize, whoa, this looks like an entirely new room altogether, right? For instance, in the first arrangement, you can see that there is more space around the room, right? There's more walking space. But the second arrangement seems more suitable if you have a small get together or a gathering with a group of friends. You can have some food on the table, something to eat, drink, and then chit chat about your school and homework, right? Now, the question is not which arrangement is better than the other. But the key takeaway is that both are distinct arrangements that have an entirely different aesthetic sense, right? Now, something similar happens in the case of molecules too. As in, one arrangement can be a life-saving drug and the other, well, not so much. As you can see from this, both the coordination compounds have the same central metal ion, platinum, and the same set of ligands, chloride ions and ammonia molecules. In the cis form of arrangement, we have the ammonia molecules and the chloride ions adjacent to each other, whereas in the trans forms, we have these ligands opposite to each other. So basically, we have the same set of ligands around the central metal ion, but they are arranged differently in space. And in molecular terms, this is what we refer to as geometrical isomerism. In geometrical isomerism, the compounds have the same molecular formula and connectivity of atoms, but they differ in spatial arrangement of substituents, like the ligands around the central metal ion here. Now, if you think about it, geometrical isomerism is not entirely new to us. We have come across this in organic chemistry chapters, right? When we talked about the cis trans isomerism in alkenes. For instance, here we have a cis alkene where the substituents methyl groups and chloride ions are adjacent to each other across a double bond and in the trans form, these substituents are opposite to each other. Now we know that in alkenes, the double bond restricts rotation which leads to distinct arrangements like cis and trans isomers, right? And something similar happens in the coordination compounds too. Coordination compounds also exhibit cis and trans isomers not because their arrangement is restricted by some double bond, but because the ligands are located at fixed positions around the central metal ion. Now remember folks, the cis and trans isomers are not there in every coordination compound, okay? These isomers are possible only in certain geometries like square, planar and octahedral complexes. But let's get to that later because that's for an entirely different video. Alright, by now we know what a cis isomer and a trans isomer looks like in a coordination compound. But here's the most important question, why are we learning all these things? Does this difference in the arrangement of ligands have any actual consequences? Absolutely. For example, let's compare the biological effects of cisplatin and transplatin. Now cisplatin, the cis form of our coordination compound is a powerful anti-cancer drug. In the body, what happens is, cisplatin is able to lose its chloride ions or chloride ligands in such a way that the central metal ion, platinum, is able to bind to the DNA as you can see here. This binding of a cisplatin to our DNA creates crosslinks that prevents the DNA from replicating or growing further. It actually ends up destroying the cancer cells. And this is possible only because of the cis arrangement of our chloride ligands, right? And this is what makes cisplatin a life-saving anti-cancer drug. But what about transplatin? The trans form of the same compound on the other hand is practically useless as an anti-cancer drug. The way the ligands are arranged does not allow the platinum metal to bind to the DNA in the same way as cisplatin does. As a result, transplatin cannot form the same DNA crosslinks that stop the cancer cells from replicating or multiplying. Now, I know some of you might be wondering, how is the cisplatin able to target only the cancer cells and not the normal healthy cells? Well, you see, the selectivity of cisplatin for cancer cells is due to several biological factors that make these cancer cells much more susceptible or vulnerable to cisplatin as compared to normal cells. But again, we won't go into the details of the mechanism of the drug action here. What we need to see is how cisplatin is able to selectively target and destroy the cancer cells whereas the transplatin cannot. And once again, all of this boils down to the arrangement of the ligands in cis versus transforms. 
and this difference in the behavior of the cis and trans isomers is not just limited to medicine alone even in catalysis and in synthetic chemistry the cis and the trans forms of a coordination compound can make a world of difference for example let's take a look at the cis and trans forms of the coordination complex given here here we have cobalt ion coordinated by two ethylene diamine bidentate ligands and two chloride ions in the cis form the chloride ions are adjacent to each other whereas in the trans form they are opposite to each other and how does this affect their behavior well as you can see in the cis isomer the chloride ions are quite close to each other right and this increases the steric strain and this makes the cis form more likely to undergo a substitution reaction where the chloride ions can be substituted by other ligands and not just that in certain reactions the cis form has been found to be more reactive than the trans form the trans form on the other hand is generally more stable due to less steric interaction between the chloride ions the cis and the trans isomers can also have entirely different colors the cis form usually has purple or violet color whereas the trans form usually has blue color and we can use this property in analytical chemistry to distinguish between the two forms so once again you can see how the cis and the trans isomers can have different reactivities stabilities and colors due to their distinct spatial arrangements of their ligands all right so that's pretty much the end of this video in the next video we will go ahead and explore the geometrical isomerism that is possible in compounds having coordination number 4 now the geometries that correspond to coordination number 4 are square planar and tetrahedral right but can they both exhibit geometrical isomerism why or why not let's learn all about that in the next video